Okay. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Yay! Just, just hit the button. Fix my glasses. Okay. Hey, Doki. All right. All right. Time for our weather report. Beautiful day out. <laughs> And uh, we are here in Marietta. We will wait for a few followers to jump on. Yes. Hopefully I'm... you can hear me. I'm gonna try to fix my mask here so everybody can. We didn't have an issue it. last week. Yeah, I know. But I had a different mask on. This one is a little bit better. Uh oh. Okay. So, welcome to this week's edition to History Loves Company. I'm Amy Reed, curator at the Marietta Museum of History. This is. Kristen McKay, the collections manager, again at the Marietta Museum of History. Yes, and um, we once again are traveling through the county to bring you history to your homes, into your homes, into your virtual world. They can be doing it at work too. We don't judge. Well, like, true. I true. mean, <laughs> hi Van. Yes, very uh, true. Hi Gregory. So, um, anybody who watched last week, we did say we were going to be at the Clark Library. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had to switch that, which yep. a little again, scheduling conflict, but that's okay. okay. We're still going to go there. Well, it worked out well because yeah. it's it's beautiful out, so yes. it's a good day to we're be outside. outside. And if you watched last week too, last week was the first week we were able to use stars. So yes. our stars are enabled. Oh my goodness, that was so fun last yes. week. Hi Anna. Um, that was so fun, and uh, you will notice again, we have stars activated at the bottom of your screen. So if you would like to continue to support the Marietta Museum of History um, and programs like this, we appreciate every bit that you can support us with, every ounce or every penny. Um, so last week when we finished, we ended up with somewhere just over 2,700 stars. Whoop, whoop. So I would love it if we could get to uh, like 2,300 today because that would give us an even 5,000 for yeah, two weeks. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you made a uh, little incentive last week. I did, stars. I did. The first people that dropped some stars for us got a private tour, or will get a private tour with me whenever they are able to, and that was, um, uh, oh, what did see? Go. Oh, thank you, Terry. 200 stars. Woo! Thanks. Can All right. It? Yes, I can. It took, okay. I got the light here. Yes. So, I was going to make a, uh, Ooh, a offer. So, I already have an offer, so I can, right. I, can, I, I can make my offer for two people. All right. My offer is if the next person to give us stars will get a free private tour of the Marietta City Cemetery with me. Oh, so does Terry get one too? Terry will be my Terry. first, so whoever my yes. second is. All right, uh, first can, and second, and you get a free private tour yes, of the cemetery. You, you, you give us some stars. Yes. It, you guys don't have to schedule on the same day. doesn't matter because I'll go to the cemetery <laughs> at a time. Um, yes. And you can... You know, kind of see what's going on and get yes. a private tour. It's on to you guys to contact us now. Yeah. <laughs> so if you get that free tour with me from last week or a free tour sure. of the cemetery with Krista, um, reach out to us at the museum. Uh, you can find our contact info at MarietaHistory.org. And, or um, you can private message us through, oh yeah, through, through Facebook. Facebook. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, so, oh wait, and if you didn't see what we're doing, I'm offering up another private, free private tour if you give us stars i'm just saying because oh. Anne's one of my uh who goes and does a lot of my tours so nice but we never get a chance to go one-on-one -on -one. Yes. so if you're interested um, yes. so yeah um before we get started on our location i do want to thank the marietta city schools for allowing us to film here today mm -hmm. um school actually isn't in session today because teachers are getting vaccinated Woo -woo, i'm Yay! excited Yay for our right. teachers. so um we are out here it's very quiet like, I like when schools are very quiet like this. It's very nice. And you can see in the background. Uh, I don't know. I prefer when the schools are loud and my house is quiet. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> um, we are just across the street, across Wind Street, as this car goes past. Yes. Um, and St. James is right behind us. You we may remember our video back there back in, what was it, October? Yes. Yeah, we yeah. were back there in October. We did a tour of the that cemetery. Yes, absolutely. So today we are in the, what do we call this, a courtyard? What do we yes. call it? Yes. I would say so. The Bernie Memorial Courtyard yes. at um, Marietta Middle School. Yes. But at the time of its dedication, it was Marietta High School. Correct. Okay. Correct. So this month is... Um, oh, wait a minute. Oh, did somebody send stuff? Oh, Anne! Yay! I love you. Thank you. All right. Anne gets that. Anne gets that second tour. one. All right. Anne, you know where to find me. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Um, so it is Women's History Month, and um, just like with all things history, we celebrate women all year round, um, especially since we are majority female staff. Yes. Um, however, uh, last week we started off with Elizabeth Porter, and this week we are moving back in time a little ways um, to, well, we're going to go all the way back to 1840s, 1850s, yeah. Where was she born? Well, she was born in 58, 58, 58 okay. but there, this is more than just one person's story. Oh, that's let's, true. Yeah. let's uh, clarify this right now. The Allison McClellan's family, first off, I told Amy I wanted to mention this yesterday. Alice McClellan, McClellan is M C L E L L A N. Yeah. There are not two C's. Right. There's two C's in McKay, but <laughs> yes. not McClellan. Correct. Very Correct. important to know. Right. And so she's Alice McClellan White Bernie. Yeah. That's her full name. If you're going to gonna... count all the husbands, yes. you know, gonna... all the baby daddies. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that in a little bit. But she, um, so let's just talk about the McClellans just for a minute. Because this is a family who, while Alice is the... The number one person people talk about. Mm -hmm. Her mother Harriet and her two sisters are very important as well. Mm -hmm. And also, I'm a, one of a family with three girls, so I love to talk about family where there's three daughters because uh -huh. it always is fun. But their Alice's mother Harriet has a long history um, with kind of I wouldn't say aristocracy, but up, upper levels in 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 British society and things like that. She was actually born in the West Indies. Mm -hmm. She comes here in... Well, her father was... Uh, oh, hold on, I have it. He was governor. Hold on. Uh, so her, her grandfather, so okay. this would be Alice's great-grandfather, was the governor general of the Dutch West Indies. Yeah. And then she had... Um, so for those who watch Outlander, like I do... When they're in the islands, the West Indies, and they're going to all the society balls, that's the time period and that's the place we're talking about. <laughs> right. I'm losing papers. Oh, Amy's losing papers. So Harriet, from the West Indies, her family moves to New York, and then they come down here to Marietta around 1850, uh, somewhere between 1850, 1855 ish. Um, and the reason being is her family has connections to um, Madison, Georgia, but also there's family that goes to GMI. So, yes, Georgia Military Georgia Institute, Institute yes. which we've also done videos on. Yes. Yes. That was like a, almost a year ago at this point. Wow. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's where her family kind of connections are coming back here. Harriet marries uh, a man named Leander McClellan, mm -hmm. and his family was from North Carolina. He was a younger son, so he bring, comes down here, kind of makes his own way. Um, he was a merchant, a cotton broker. Um, and so when the 1858 is when Alice is born. Mm -hmm. And then you have a son who comes a little bit later, Henry. You have a second daughter, Lillian, and the third daughter, Grace. But um, the family is here during the war. Mm -hmm. And the young, the son, Henry, actually dies. He dies at around the age of four. He is buried along with Harriet and Leander uh, in the city cemetery. So that's kind of where I started. All of my stuff is Ooh, more stars. Thank thank you. You. 200 more stars. Woo! Woo I love it. So that's where I kind of started my research outside of Alice, was because yeah. they're buried at the city cemetery. Right. So during the war, especially in 1864. At this point, they're living on Winters, I yes. believe. Yes. Winter Street. So right um, just uh, a block from South Park where um the telephone company where southern bell and now it's yes. at&t yeah that that general area right there is where their house was uh, pretty much a kind of like a not far from the murray house where yes. we had done that video as yeah. well um yeah. but the family loses the young uh, young henry dies the war is coming through leander decides to send his wife and two daughters at that time alice and lillian to baltimore mm -hmm. now Amy and I need to make a road trip to Duke University. Yes. Because Duke University actually has, there's supposedly three diaries, but only one survived, mm. that Harriet wrote. And it's um, beginning January 1st, 1864. And it goes kind of towards the end of the war. But they go to Baltimore, mother and two daughters, has the third daughter while there. 
talks about life in Baltimore because it was safer at that point, 1864. Mm -hmm. um, they come back and it says that at first she was treated as a traitor by her neighbors because a lot of people I could not escape. Left. Yeah. Well, and she escaped just north, north, just far enough. A lot of people refused south, mm -hmm. South Georgia, and they kept having to move, or or they refused over to Alabama or maybe right. Nashville. Yeah. Um, or actually, Nashville people came down here. Yeah. Um, but they refused kind of south and east and west. Yeah. They, a lot, not many of them went north. No. Yeah. So she went north. They come back. Um, they live back in their house uh, with Leander. But after the war, his business is really like many merchants that mm -hmm. we've talked about. It's not thriving. Right. So I think at that point is when they when they come back. For some reason, they moved to the house on Church Street and yes. rent out apartments in this house on Church Street. Right. So they don't own the whole house. They rent out apartments is what I read, or rooms. And from that spot is where she starts her bonnet making business. Yes. But yeah. in 1870, they end up moving to Atlanta in hopes that he yeah. can be be able to provide more. And, and, and this is Harriet and Leander. These are Alice's parents. Parents, yes. yes. And that house on Church Street that they lived in for a time was on Church Street and then became the um, Presbyterian Church's rectory. Yes. And then it was sold to private owners who then moved it to Kennesaw Avenue. So if you're driving down Kennesaw Avenue, if you're heading from the square out to the mountain, it would, it would be on your uh, right. right. And there's a sign out front that says the home of Alice McClellan Burney. Which her name is spelled wrong. Just saying. Yeah. Um, but there is a, yeah, there's a marker there. Yes. So, but if you're wondering, that house wasn't originally there. It was originally on Church Street in the parking lot of the Presbyterian Church. I mean, that's a, that house and many other houses in Marietta are a whole other, like, historic preservation story oh yeah great I story mean, yeah. yeah they um, saved it for sure. for sure but that one is a private residence yeah. that's why we are not <laughs> i mean we could ask we're nosy enough but yeah. I, we don't want to put people out right now <laughs> that's not gonna happen so um the family ends up living in atlanta and leander dies in 1883 mm -hmm. which okay. we talked about this earlier you and i this 1883 1880 to 1883 is a very pivotal kind of time for Alice mm -hmm. because she has married he's not Theodore was Alonzo right Alonzo White and whom she met on a she had gone up to college at yes. Mount Holyoke uh university in Massachusetts I think it's a college a college there's college a university no there's a difference <laughs> college which is kind of like one of the Ivy League schools for girls yes at the time even I don't know what it is now but um, she went to Mount Holyoke, and then on a boat, on a ship ride back home, she was up there for a year, she meets Alonzo on the ship. Oh, okay. And that's where they met. And he, at the time, I don't know why he was on the ship, but at the time, he was a lawyer and the sheriff of Charleston. It was destiny. Yes. And you know how about those cops? I know. You know, those cops are just... They're charmers in the beginning, charming. for sure. Charming. <laughs> FYI, we're both married to law enforcement. <laughs> so there. So she gets charmed by the sheriff on the ship, and they end up getting married. And she was only like 18, 19? Yeah, 18 maybe. So, I mean, not yeah. unusual for the time period. Yeah. And, um, they, and they live in Charleston. Yes. And um, he briefly. ends... Briefly, yeah. He ends up dying of... Um, consumption typhoid no i think i read typhoid a disease that is preventable <laughs> today yes we're gonna he gets sick he gets sick and she literally at that point is like eight months pregnant yeah she's they're real... only married like a year i mean they're not together very long she's not in hey davis she's not in charleston for very long before um she gets pregnant and he dies my notes here say pneumonia so maybe oh, all God. of the things i don't really <laughs> yeah, know all the things <laughs> oh bless. anyway <laughs> bless him and bless her yeah he dies she comes back here to have her first child her daughter which i can't help but say it in a in fun way alonzita alonzita uh, yeah you know uh, or yes. yeah i just think it's named a funny. after her father in memorial obviously yes. um in a feminine form of alonzo i think it's a cool little I name i love it i love it so alonzita she moves back here with harriet and leander to have the baby 
Well, I mean, yeah. Alice moves back here to have yes. Alanzita um, here, and I would imagine has her in the house. Um, be my well, guess. they were living in Atlanta, so oh, they're wherever in Atlanta, they're Atlanta. At that point. Okay. So she's moved back at home, and she has uh, Alanzita. I think is born in 1881 or 1882. It's one of the two. But her father mm -hmm. dies really close after that. Mm -hmm. So all of this is happening, but she starts to teach if i remember this correctly she's got it or no it was i read that she was doing advertising work did you read that she did did i point that out she for the there was a company called the jeans mcmillan jeans millen i'll have to find it it's it's the jeans millen finally got it anna what'd you get <laughs> <laughs> did you get, did you catch the the disease? I don't know what you get. Um, but she, yeah, she worked at, she was a model. She would go around and do presentations to ladies on fashions and try to sell. She was kind of like a door to door, door to door salesman for, um, fashions, uh, of the time. And she actually advocated against corsets. So she, um, she was a little, um, ahead of the time, ahead of the time trying yeah. to, Show women what clothing could look like without the the corsetry and the you know all the stuff. Um, and that breathing so, is good. Yeah. Like. Yes. She advocated outdoor <laughs> exercise for women, um, and you know all that. So. Yeah. Um. Really quick. Okay. Good. And I'm glad you got it. If anybody, let me know if we start skipping. Because I didn't turn off the Wi-Fi, but I don't think there's Wi-Fi out here at the okay. school. I'm not really sure. But let me yeah. know. Okay. Um, yeah. If you if you're having problems receiving us then let us know yeah i should have done that first but we kind of got over <clears throat> here and i got sidetracked it's okay um so yeah so the um so she does some modeling and sales um and then starts she, teaching she does start teaching and i think that's very important to realize that she wasn't just um being in not inactive but she's she's trying to make a life for herself and her daughter mm -hmm. and in this world at that time where women are are starting to really see the social aspects of ch of making sure child welfare and mm -hmm. all these kind of things so um she ends up meeting theodore theodore so the story goes oh, you see right he, there, okay keep going. so the story goes theodore thank you anna theodore um comes down into um teach to start his law practice in atlanta so yes. he's originally from washington dc mm -hmm. and he comes down to start as a lawyer in atlanta and he at some point he stays in the um harriet is running a a uh what do you call it house uh, um what do you call it a boarding house? A boarding house. I'm like <laughs> trying to gonna say something totally off. A boarding house. And he's staying with her for a little bit. I don't know if he just comes up to Marietta. Because I think at this point they're in Marietta. Maybe they're in Atlanta at that no, point. No, they're still in Atlanta. They're in Atlanta. And he's staying with her at her mother's boarding house. That's what it was. And that's how they meet. Yes. Yeah. So. Um, and at this at this time, too, though, Harriet is also, obviously, Le Leander, has, she's a widow. And Harriet is involved in social organizations too. She helps found uh, the Home for the Friendless. So sad. So sad. It's <laughs> so sad. such a sad name. And it's in essence for orphans, but it's like <laughs> Home for the Friendless. friendless. So sad. I know. Oh. It's, but but again, <laughs> somebody realized that orphans needed help, and, and Harriet friends. and friends. <laughs> orphans need friends too. I know, right. <laughs> So anyway, Alice and Theodore court. Yes. Get married. Yep. Alice went after the younger fella. She's a cougar. The Although, also, think about it this way. She's a single mom just trying to work it. And, you know, here comes Mr. Lawyer, hotshot from D.C., who's got a lot of important political ties. I'll go say and that. And yep. so she charmed him this time. She learned a lot from Alonzo, and she charmed him. Oh, yes. So... so very briefly about Theodore. Yes. Because this is not about him. Oh, I have something. He, um, his father was a major general, or makes his way up to a major general uh, during the Civil War on the Union side. His grandfather was I have it. a contradiction, to say the least. Well, uh, okay. But you have the wording so, right. So, Theodore Burney's father was David Burney. Here's a picture of him. Un uh, general, like you said, Union General, Major General, 
um, David Burney, who I believe has <clears throat> probably a very extensive history behind him. We're not going to go into that today. But, um, because he's, he's not in Marietta's storyline. No, he's not. And his father, who's also not in, in Marietta's storyline, um, is James Burney. Okay. Now, James Burney was, um, also a lawyer, um, from Kentucky, but was actually incredibly active in the American Colonialization Society, which in the 1830s, 1840s, that was a big group of people who were um, pushing to um, free all the slaves and move them back to Liberia, which was a kind of a country they created, or a community they created to, um, to, to move all the American enslaved people. And just instead of helping them try to find their homes or their ancestor, yeah. ancestral homes, just putting them all in one place in Africa. So, um, he was a big proponent of that. How, so, he's, he is given the title of an abolitionist because of his work with that. However, he did own slaves. And he didn't, he kind of hung on, he, he let go of, um, he, he freed some of them as he moved from place to place around the country trying to promote this colonialization society. But he didn't free all of his enslaved workers until um, uh, later in life. Was it was later was, in life. So He had to? Cause yeah. Had, no, I think it was before the war, before but not, but not long okay. before the war. So, um, you know, well, while he did work to promote that, so that's kind of the, the ancestry that Theodore Burney is coming mm -hmm. from, um, who, again, is the lawyer that ends up meeting Alice McClellan White at this time. Mm -hmm. um, and... Mary. Yes. So they marry. Yes. They end up having um, two daughters in pretty quick succession. Um, Lillian, who was named after Alice's... No. Lillian was first, sorry. And then Catherine, like a year later. Mm -hmm. uh, again, another family of three daughters. Love it. Yep. Um, so they end up having their three children. Now, I don't think Ellen Zita took the name Bernie. She, no. Like, she kept she the name white. white. Yeah, she was always white. They moved back up to D.C. after they got married, and they actually moved into um, the Chevy Chase, Maryland community, which is just outside of D.C., and I did find a picture of their home that they lived in in Chevy oh, that's Chase. that's a little house. Yeah. Not little, but... No, but it's, yeah, um, and... This was the Chevy Chase Historical Society has some stuff from Theodore Burney on there. Do we know if that house still exists? I think it does. Oh, yeah, okay, I think it's still there. Another yeah. road trip. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't know that they have a marker or anything mm. about it. Um, so, yeah, so that's where she ends up when she finds herself. I'm assuming she doesn't have to teach anymore. Um, actually, no, I think when she first gets up there, she starts kind of a kindergarten yes. in her home. I think if that's Well, correct. she's starting to NBC. realize that younger children aren't getting that, um, Extra. push into school. Like, right. it's all starting, and for well, some Kindergarten kids, wasn't a thing. No, it wasn't point. a thing. They didn't have kindergarten, preschool, none of that was a concept. But she's trying to push this concept. And so she starts trying to bring these children into her home to teach them. And in that process, at the same time, she's also whining and dining with the elite of Washington, Washington. D.C., which includes all the politicians, the um, uh, vice president's wife. Yes. And becomes, she befriends a woman named Phoebe Hurst. Mm -hmm. And, of course, Phoebe was uh, William Randolph Hearst's mother. Yes, the, news, forget, the newspaper yeah, mogul. The newspaper mogul. I forget what the father's name was. Mr. Uh, Hurst. Mr. Hurst. Anyways, he was rich. He was an oil tycoon. And um, so they had money. Um, so she becomes friends with Phoebe. And basically, they start getting together, as women do. And um, They're ladies who lunch. And ladies who lunch. And they decided that they needed a way to um, bring women together. Now, this during this time period, this is in the 1880s, 1890s, 1890s. Women's groups in high society are really thriving. So you see a lot of um, women's clubs. You see the starting of um, women's rights for votes. Um, you see the start of women's rights for um, family planning, for a whole bunch, you know, temperance, get, temperance all these social groups yes, social are coming groups, to groups. Yes. yes. 
So you see a lot of that kind of thing. So this is part of that. So essentially, they get together and they create um, the first. They they get create a meeting. The first council of the um, National Congress of Mothers is what it's called. Well, and I read somewhere that it said that um, Alice realized that obviously Congress at this point is men, mm -hmm. our Congress, mm -hmm. and why not recreate that that idea of a Congress for children's welfare yes. in connection to education. Because right. there really wasn't right. anything. You're also, we had talked about this earlier too, public school systems, let's use Marietta as an example. Marietta's public school system does not really start as a whole until 1892, is that right? I don't know. But what I'm saying is, is like... <laughs> Somewhere in there. But what I'm saying is, is that it, it, education was oftentimes private. Yes. Or um, if, if it was a public school, it wasn't necessarily uh, for everyone mm -hmm. and have that. And there was no, right. no uh, chain of command or anything like that. So mm -hmm. Marietta was yeah. not an exception. We have our school system that came in, I want to say it's 1892, yeah. somewhere in that time frame. So. so they invited all these women's club ladies from around the country. And hundreds, hundreds came, if not more than that. Um, I know to the first one, it might have been hundreds. Uh, to the second know. one, it was thousands, like a couple thousand. Oh, yeah, for sure. There was, I mean, from all over the states, from every state. <laughs> they were worried and, there was only going to be like 15 people. Yes. Now, this was um, primarily, well, it was 99% um, white women, rich white women. But there was, I did read somewhere that there was one um, well, she would have been free. They were all free. Yeah. But one African American woman who did come and join the Congress, the first meeting. Hmm. I don't know where she was from, and I don't know who she was. We'd have to go into the PTA records to find that, and I don't even know where those are, to be honest. I don't know. Another but, road trip. I know road trip. Um. So, but it did, I did see mention of that. Now, I do want to stop here and mention though that because of that, and because of the segregated school system that was in place. The PTA, the, well, I should say National Congress of Mothers, and then it became the National Congress of Mothers and Teachers, and then it became the Parent Teacher Association. So there's a, there's a progression here. But um, until um, the late 60s, it was segregated as well, mm -hmm. completely segregated. Now, another woman from Atlanta, though, Selena Sloan Butler, an African-American woman, she did create and start the National Colored Parents and Teachers mm -hmm. Association. And so um, that that went gangbusters too. That was national, um, but she started it from Atlanta as well. So um, Atlanta was, you know, in our area, this part of Georgia was a hot spot for parents and teachers and education. Mm -hmm. um, and so they were segregated until uh, around 1970, 69, 70, and then they merged mm -hmm. together. So, um, but back to Alice, Bernie. So they, the first meeting. There were a couple of things on the agenda. There was a lot on the agenda. Yeah. But one of the big things was promoting kindergartens. Um, another one, as a single mother herself, she was a young single mother. She had a special place in her heart for single mothers. And so one of their platforms was to push for a welfare bill specifically to give money to single working mothers. And the idea behind it was actually so that these mothers didn't have to work at all. They wanted mothers in the homes. They were not supportive of working mothers, surprisingly, when, they're, when their children are young. Right. Um, and I say surprisingly because Alice had had so many jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, but maybe it's not surprising. You know, as working mothers, you know how hard it is to do both. Well, yeah, and that's what she and was probably... she was promoting, saying it's so hard to benefit your children and be 100% in both places at the home and the office, the job. So they, they were really trying to find ways to keep women in the homes raising and teaching their children. Mm -hmm. um, another thing was a family planning platform. They did not advocate birth control. However, they advocated sex education in the schools. So this is the first time you really start seeing that and a promotion of teaching um, school-age children. I don't know how young, but school-age, mm -hmm. all, all about sex ed. Um, so Which she um, pretty we, progressive at the, for the time. Yeah, we didn't bring it because it's in our exhibit. She writes a book called Childhood. Yes, where she does address, I think, in a, in, a, in in more detail, a lot of these initiatives. Mm -hmm. um, and we do have a copy of that um, on on display in our exhibit about her. Yeah, 
Um, but also during this time period, this 1895 to 1897, um, when all of this is going on, Theodore dies. Yeah. So she again is widowed with young children. You know what I noticed? Both of her husbands died at age 35. That's a I little creepy. I didn't notice random that. Random fact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, wow. I know. So, she's got um, young children, and she's trying to come up with, or mm -hmm. trying to get this ball rolling. Yes. So, you see her youngest sister, Grace, helping her, along with her mother. Um, their other sister, Lillian, is raising mm -hmm. her own family. So, again, you've got this, this family of women supporting each other in yeah. order to support more women, which yeah. I love that yeah. story. So one of the popular magazines of the day was Frank Leslie's Popular Monthly. Boy, that's kind of bold to put popular in your magazine. Yeah, it's very popular. <laughs> and they did a, um, a whole um, spread on the Mother's Congress and on Alice Burney. And here's one of the photos they had of her in there. So you can see a picture of Alice, still oh, pretty young and spry. All right, so right in the middle with that big lace collar, that's Alice. And this lady right here, that's her mama. That's Harriet. This is the first, um, like, board to the National Congress. I'm just going to call it the PTA because that's what we all call it now, mm -hmm. so it's easier that way. But um, if you look at these faces again, I'm just going to say this. I'm not going to mess with these ladies. <laughs> if they're they're gonna, serious. They're serious about their efforts. Yes. And um, so, yeah. Um, who? Where is she? This is, is that Phoebe right there? That one? Possibly. I think I it's know. this one right yeah. next to her. I mean, right there in the middle. That lady. Yeah, I think so. Uh, but also, you have uh, the vice president's wife. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a whole thing. Yeah. So, anyway, so she gets this whole thing started. She ends up dying in 1907. Well, she she resigns her post in 1902 oh, yeah. because yeah. of her ill health. Yes, and it's cancer. Yes. I think, yeah. So, she ends up dying of cancer in 1907. And um, her legacy and work live on through the, the committees. It grows. It's all over the place. I had a PTA. You had a PTA. She had a PTA. We still have a we PTA. We all have PTAs. I still have to sign um, up every year at every school for PTA. So, um, but um, hold on. Before I forget. So she dies in 1907. Her sisters continue on. Her mother especially continues on yeah. her cause in the um, PTA. Her new her her death makes national news. Her mother's death makes national news too in 1925. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so that torch is being kept yeah. for Alice into the 1920s with her mother, and then some other Marietta actually gets their PTA, I believe, in 1917. Yes, that, which is interesting. That you know, I think they obviously knew what she was doing up there, but it took a while for them well, to organize. They did have a women, I mean, a mother's club at Waterman Street. I yes. saw that earlier, like around 1910. It was just a mother's club of, and a but, similar concept. But, yes, but, um, but Georgia itself, Georgia's first PTA, which I don't know where it was, was 1906. Okay. So you would, yeah. I mean, at first I thought, okay, yeah. but... Yeah. Um, I will say Georgia was in the top 20 to get their yeah. first, to get a PTA, so yeah. like, yay us. Yay. Um, but yeah, so officially where we're standing. Yes, this is the memorial. So she dies, but her, um, her cause and her, anyways, it was at the PTA National Headquarters, I believe. They wanted to honor her somehow. Mm -hmm. And so they decided to honor her in her hometown of Marietta, Georgia, and they reached out to the citizens of Marietta, and one in particular was Virginia Van Stone Crosby, mm -hmm. um, who was a woman who lived here in town, and um, her biggest claim to fame was she was a descendant of George Washington. That was her big deal. Um, Not a direct descendant. No, but still. She walked <laughs> around town like she was hot stuff because of that. Um, but, <laughs> so, so um, uh, well, you know, some other people who are on this committee, okay, committee. locally, yes. is um, Mayor Rip Blair, because mm -hmm. this is 1940, Judge Harold Hawkins, uh, Virginia, uh, Mrs. Charles McDonald Brown. So you've got some people mm -hmm. around here mm -hmm. uh, getting involved. And mm -hmm. 
people who I'm have reading, pools. Sorry. So this, yeah, so this is in 1940. They start coming together to try to create a memorial. Okay. So they raise funds for it. They, somebody initiate or writes a play about her life mm -hmm. and they perform that as a fundraiser at one of the schools. Well, it says here, um, the officers of St. James Episcopal Church this week, this is November 1940, revealed they will sell its rectory, which was her, her house. Home. Uh, the former home of Mrs. Bernie as a site for the memorial and museum. Yeah, there was a, they wanted to make a museum too. So in the process of this memorial coming together, they um, were able to reach out to descendants of Alice Bernie and um, Virginia was able to make contact and got personal items of mm -hmm. Alice's. So um, the daughters are all still alive at this point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they they received clothing that she wore. They had the pen that she used in her office um, that um, she used to sign all the important documents. They received her secretary, her um, her you know her desk, her yeah. dining room table and chairs, a whole bunch of things that some of which we have on display at the museum in our permanent exhibit to Alice Burney. Yes. We do have that. Um, where you can see her personal items and effects and a few more anecdotal stories about her life mm -hmm. you can read um, there in the museum. Um, however, some of the items um, at first, they were intended for a museum that never came to fruition. Um, eventually, when Virgin Virginia Vanstone Crosby died, they were given to the Cobb Youth Museum. Mm -hmm. And this is in the 60s, I believe. And Yeah, um, yeah and we don't know what happened to those. The pen and clothing. Clothing was supposedly used to, at the museum for their plays and what they do there. Um, but if anybody who watches this has a connection to the Cobb Youth Museum, um, we are curious to know if they still have those items in their collection and um, if they'd like to find a new home for those yes, items. Yes, because there's a scrapbook somewhere too. Yeah, but we scrapbook. Think, but we think yeah. we might know where that one is. Yeah, we just I don't know. It. So it got spread all around the county, so to speak. Um, and so... Uh, anyways, they, back to 1942, they created this memorial, but what they wanted to do was make it a national memorial. Mm-hmm. I could have sworn I saw paper fly off. Okay. And they got the national PTA involved, and so every state in the country, their, their state PTA was to send a block of marble or granite or, you know, Whatever some sort of a stone. stone yeah. yeah, a stone with their state's name. So let's, yeah, I'm going to take this off. Okay for a minute and show you guys this beautiful memorial that we still have okay so I'm gonna walk over here to the beginning actually now when they dedicated this it was huge everybody was involved in the city it was a huge event huge ordeal and um, one of the other Marriott sons of Marietta that we have mentioned before Niles Trammell he was um, he lived in the Trammell house, right? He grew up in that house. We've done, we, Victorian Village, we did a video series on the homes um, that are on Trammell Street. And Niles Trammell grew up in one of those homes. He ends up becoming the president of NBC, okay? Like the NBC, National Broadcasting Company. And the gets Peacock Network. The Peacock Network. He start, he's involved in getting the three chimes, the ding, ding, ding. Yep. And yeah, that's his, his, his thing. Um, but anyways, he becomes the president of NBC Radio, because it's radio back then. So, when they created this memorial and had the dedication, he actually came from L.A. or wherever he was. I think it was New York. New point. York, okay. Um, and they did a live broadcast, live radio broadcast on NBC um, from the memorial like program. Um, they, it was like 20 minutes or something they aired. I have looked everywhere online to find digital copy of this. I haven't been able to find it yet, so I don't know was if it's this out the there. First, I thought I had read somewhere that this was like the first. And if you just said this, I apologize. I didn't. Okay, was this the first broadcast that was done live coast to coast? Oh, like, I don't know. I, there was something else about this broadcast. I don't know. There's like, a lot of rumors out there in the world of history. Like that wasn't one, recorded and played back. I don't know. Like it just. Another rumor about this that I haven't quite substantiated yet is that this is the first national memorial on a school campus i don't know if that's true or not i've heard that before as well yeah. Yeah. but if you come out here you'll see a beautiful archway it says bernie memorial okay i know don't let me get run over i'll come all the way out okay. here you're okay i'm watching all right here we go bernie memorial okay and you walk in some beautiful 
I don't know if that's granite or marble. Marble. Over here is kind of neat little place. It says registration book. So when you came and visited, I'm assuming there was a book probably kept in this hole that now has a bird's nest. Yeah, we weren't going to... I'm not that. putting my hand in there. Uh -oh. um, and it says this garden is maintained by the Marietta Men's Garden Club. Now, for a while it was, and that was back in the 60s and 70s, I think. But now it's maintained by another garden club. Do you remember which uh, one? It's the Marietta Daisies. The Marietta Daisies. Marietta so Daisies. there is a garden club that takes care of it. Over here is just some more plain marble. Um, then you go down some stairs. It looks like originally there would have been some sort of ornamentation on either side here maybe an yeah. urn i don't know maybe benches a little bench a chair um and you walk in on this beautiful marble this is all i believe north georgia marble okay and then look at this all of the states and every state as we said sent their their square their stone with the name in it now, to georgia oh, hold on, wait, wait, wait. oh what oh yeah when what? this was dedicated, this was 1942. Yes. Alaska and Hawaii <clears throat> were not states yet. I don't, that's details. I don't know. <laughs> when did Hawaii become a state? 59. Same with Alaska. Well, they were pretty important. They were, but I, I think it's kind of like the idea with Puerto Rico now, where I mean, it's technically not a state, but it's a part. You so know, this idea. is post Pearl Harbor. I think they felt sorry for them and said, hey. Well, does Alaska have one? I didn't pay attention. I don't know. We'll look. Okay. I do know that Hawaii's, which is right here. Well, that's the reason why yes. you had a okay. stone. Hawaii's, um, I do know that the national PTA paid for Hawaii's stone, and it was it was fabricated here, not from Hawaii, because shipping costs at the time and just the, the availability to ship was um, very difficult because of the war going on. They You couldn't get things like big old blocks of stone shipped as easily as you might have otherwise do you see alaska anywhere it's over in the corner right? oh see well first off um if you okay. have any louisiana yeah. people it, it's looking poor like louisiana Not they look good. like they just sent concrete i don't think they sent any special stone but... and also the ocd in me wants it either alphabetical oh or yeah when they came in the union because i don't think that's how maybe there is a rhyme or reason to it i, I don't, don't know there is I don't know. Alaska. There is Alaska. And then that pretty. Now, I do know that some of the states couldn't ship it as well as Hawaii. So, um, so Georgia just made theirs here in North Georgia. But I don't know which states that is. So, um, Georgia's is right here. Okay. All right. So, we got all the states. And then in the middle is a sundial. So, and it says, this sun court is dedicated to a great woman who made a great dream come true. Alice McClellan Burney, founder of the National Congress of Parents and Teachers, from the seed of faith she planted has come the flowering of a new era of hope and promise for America's children. And then, got a lovely sundial with, um... I think it did have something. Yeah, I know. It it's missing something there. I'm not going to say rowdy high schoolers, but... I don't That's know. Highly possible. Probably. Um, and it's got the, um, what's it called? Astrological uh, yeah, there's astrological there's you, signs. There's the Gemini. There's me. Yeah. The lion. Yeah. Leo. So with a compass on it and the clock. Now, the sun's out, but I don't see a it's you thing. It's because a thingamajig. Yeah, I don't know how this works. If anybody knows what that's called, let me know. <laughs> I'm just going to call it a thingamajig. I don't really know how to tell time on a sundial. We should have learned that. Well, I do. Um, I, uh, let me, so then we've got some beautiful benches on either side. Somebody's put a lovely metal arbor there. Um, well, the, the Marietta Daisies take care of the rose garden here, so they yeah. might have done that. Yeah, I sh yeah, that's right. We should mention that it is a rose garden. However, it is out of season, so all the roses have lost their buds. They're just thorns, it's thorny sticks. So are the benches gone? Um... I don't know, Van, which benches. We've got the two yeah. benches here. Well, there's four, well, there's four total. Okay. Oh, there's four total. That's right. Yeah, one, two. Sure. Sorry. Right there are four. One over there with our stuff. And there's another one. So, yeah, there's four. But okay. I don't know if there were two right by the stairs. That's what we were. Yeah. Everybody knows the answer to that because there's not two by the stairs. Yeah, we don't know what was over there on those two um, poured slabs on either side of the stairs here. Looks like there was something there, but we don't know what. Um, so yeah, so the, here's the the old high school, current Marietta Middle School, and their old, uh, is that the theater? I think it is the theater. You were in there last. I know. 
So, um, let's go in the shady spot. Yeah, it's hot, hot y'all. I mean, it is. It's hot out here. I'm swearing. I'm glistening. Glistening. That's what ladies Southern, do. Southern ladies do not sweat. We glisten. We glisten. Come on, sit down, too. That's what it's for. Right. So, that is Alice, the story of Alice McClellan Burney. Why she is important here. There is, um, a, a Burney Elementary in Smyrna named after her. And, and there's Burney Elementary across the country. It's not just here, yeah, but yeah, there yeah. are more than one. So, yeah. And we have a park named after her, too. Yeah. And a street. Yeah. So there's many. So lot, lots of memorials. I did read somewhere in the PTA um, documents that one of the stained glass windows in the National Cathedral is the Bernie Memorial window. And it's supposed to have like children, like a schoolhouse yes. with children. And like an alphabet or something. I yeah, would that too. an alphabet. But I looked it up. I Googled that. And I couldn't find a picture of that. So I don't, I can't substantiate that. But that's, that's what they say. Um, we'll have to go to D.C. You know, you know, to find it. Many, many places. Yes. Um, so, yeah. So, she has been honored. Um, it's funny, though, that in Cobb County, not many people realize, who, not many people who are involved in the probably hundreds of PTAs yeah. in Cobb County um, realize that the founder of that is from Marietta. Yep. And so, um, and again, we have a permanent exhibit dedicated to her in our museum. Um, we... The OR um, current mayor, Thunder Tumlin, Steve Th uh, Tumlin, is a huge um, oh, he loves supporter Alice. of Alice and has done a lot to support us promoting her and maintaining her history. So um, shout out to, to mayor, to the mayor. Yup. So a um, couple things before we, you know, finish this off, this video. You could still put stars up. Yeah. Just saying. Stars. Um, if you you know kind of go back later you could still do it afterwards that's fine we're not picky <laughs> um we hopefully will be at the clark library next week again yes. it was a scheduling thing mm -hmm. but again we're lucky it's a nice day so that's fine mm -hmm. um we finally got a title for our next exhibit so <laughs> last week it was a little rough we weren't sure where we oh, were going God. but we're good now uh, what you're going would you it. like to say it no cause... you can say it it's i your... don't remember <laughs> Oh, well, then I'll say it. Sorry. Um, it, our new exhibit is entitled Marietta 1899, Color Captured in Black and White. Yes, that's it. We went through many iterations before we came on that one. Krista came up with the final final title. She start, that, that is often, a little as an insider's note, that's often the hardest part of an exhibit is coming up with a catchy title. It really is. Yes. So, and, yeah. So, Marietta 1899 color captured in black and white and it's all centering around images of Marietta in 18 specific in a very specific time frame yep. in 1899 and many of the photographs um, are of African Americans during that time period that um, usually are not shown in the photography or if they are it's only as a as a house servant or um, or mill worker or you know in in those kind of roles um it's not showing them in their everyday personal lives and and events and social lives so well and these are literally photos that we received six months ago like we yeah. didn't even know they existed yeah so brand new nobody's seen them but us no they, they've seen you guys have seen a couple yeah, of them but not the majority yeah yeah um so yeah we're very yeah. excited about that it's photos of the national cemetery from that time um, homes on a home on Kennesaw Avenue that does not um, exist anymore. Yeah, mm -mm. Um, the, uh, Thank the you, square, Anna. A, an early photograph of the the courthouse before it was remodeled. Um, one of probably one of the last photos of that courthouse. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, so a lot of great images we're about to about to bring to Marietta mm -hmm. to the public. So we hope you come and visit us. It will be up. Um, hopefully by the end of the month, <laughs> we got a title. We don't have a date yet, but I'm working hard as hard she as I can. Is. She's working hard, everybody. I'm not, <laughs> it usually is. We need the title first many yeah. times. So we've yeah. got it and we're, thank she's you, Ann. Getting, she's, uh, she's, she's cracking it out. I'm, you know, in between studying for Alice Burney and you know, the other things. All right. Thank you all for sticking with us and anything else? Got anything else? Uh, no, I want everybody to have a wonderful weekend. How about yes, that? Yes, yes. Hopefully we'll keep this weather. It's great. Uh, it's supposed to get a little bit cooler. It's supposed oh. to be rainy next week, but... Okay, we'll be indoors. Hope you join us. Thank you, guys. Bye. See you next time.